transition toward cooler weather. You might be looking for a little bit different wine to drink from a lighter option for summer that you may have been enjoying. That's right, and joining us this morning is certified wine expert, Ron Breistein. He's a certified wine expert. He's here with us today with some of the best wines for fall. Thanks for joining us. Sure, glad to be here. Well, before we start tasting, uh, what makes a good fall wine. People are like, what's the difference between a summer wine and a fall wine? Well, as you start to move into the fall, the temperatures are supposed to start dropping here pretty soon, I think. You start to get wines that may be a little bit fuller, a little bit heavier, a little bit richer, uh, warm you up a little bit more, but not quite as heavy as we'll do come winter time. But uh, that's sort of the direction we like to take. So like my white summer wine wearing a sweater. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <Okay. laughs> and speaking of summer wines, you know, you always think of rosé for summer, but you have an interesting first pick for us. Yes, this is a French rosé from the Rhone region, Chateau Le Nerth. And it's, I think that rosé can be consumed anytime all year long, especially French rosés. They have really nice body, good fruit to them. This is a blend of three different grape varieties with Grenache, Mer uh, Mouvet, and Cinso. And it's very, it's got some body weight to it, but it's not too light. You're and right. it, it'll go really nicely with all different kinds of foods. And I keep saying that uh, rosé isn't just for the summer anymore. When you pick a rosé, do you have to look at the color? In other words, some are darker pink, some are lighter, does it matter? I'm not sure it matters, depends on the, what you really enjoy, but I think the ones that have a little bit more intense color like this one tend to uh, be a little bit bolder flavored and the lighter color ones tend to not be as heavy. So maybe this is more of a fall wine. Definitely. Absolutely, uh -huh. and also how it kind of stays on the sides of the glass too. Yeah, it's got a little more glycerin to it, it so sure the does. legs are... Uh, showing a little bit more the on legs too. The, the little things that fall down when you do that okay yeah. cool chardonnay is next well chardonnay is still the number one wine thank you you're welcome rosé is catching up actually worldwide to chardonnay is on how much is being consumed oh, really? believe it or no not kidding. But, uh, wow. this is from saint francis in sonoma and this chardonnay the reason i like it is that well, that's it's really nice. not overly heavy but it's not really light it's got really nice fruit to it. It's lively, it's bright, it goes with lots of foods. You can drink it by itself or certainly uh, with uh, a really nice meal. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Chardonnay, but this has a nice, it has a nice fruity flavor. Right. It's and a little bright. It's true Very and nice. it's not as oaky because some Chardonnays tend to be super oaky. This is just right. Exactly, that's mm -hmm. how one of the reasons that we talked about fall, that this is good. It's not as heavy when we get further into November, December, and we start to look at some heavier wines, we would want something a little more rich and oaky. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Tell us about the next pick you chose. So this next one is a wine from the Campania region in Italy, yep. and it is Alianico, and that's the grape variety. Mm -hmm. And it's indigenous to that region from Villa Matilda Winery. And the reason I like this is it starts to get us into a little bit heavier wine. Oh. It's not quite as light as a Pinot Noir, but not as heavy as, say, a big Bordeaux. Right. And it's got really nice fruit. It's smooth. It's easy to drink. It's got a nice finish to it. Goes with all different kinds of food, especially Italian food, being an Italian wine, and it's just really delightful. Yeah, it is very dark, but it's not heavy at all. Right. No, no, it's very nice. nice. crisp taste to that. Yes, I think that that's, that's one of the things is when you start to switch seasons is you wanna to try to find wines that help you transition. If you just go shock from one yeah. style to another, it can sometimes like not feel or taste quite the way you want it to. And, we've and, got about and last, seconds. what you got here. Yes. So this is one of my favorite wines and Cabernet is kind of king with a lot of things and this is from Cake Bread in Napa Valley. And the reason I like this is this wine is always really drinkable, smooth, Voluptuous, velvety, oh, just crazy. finishes beautifully, oh, oh, oh. and wow. it's not inexpensive, but it's worth it. It's Who just said a, you can't have a wine smoothie at 7:50 a.m. Yeah. This <laughs> is phenomenal. It's not Cheers. just for breakfast anymore. <laughs> That's right. It's, uh, it's for just such a lovely color. Really Look good. at the color. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. Great. Very nice. And as we wrap up, price points from what to what? Well, the rosé and, and the Chardonnay are in the 12 to 15 dollar price range. The Alianico's in the 
18 to 20 dollar range and the cabernets in the 70 dollar plus range ron always thinks so really that's these the great selection suzanne lamignol range yes. <laughs> yeah, right? no you're gonna buy it for me for christmas a case <laughs> ron, ron thank you in. very much ron brightstein with us and uh we'll have all of ron's suggestions on our website cbschicago.com a little bit later on this morning